Namaste. This time I am going to do a video in English. Usually I am doing videos in Malayalam. This channel Bharata Darshanam was started with the aim to translate some of the English works of uh, great gurus of Bharata in India to Malayalam. But this time I am doing an English video because I have promised to do this video in English to my brother, Sai brother Dirk. I think most of you know Dirk. Anyway, for those who don't know him, I will give an introduction. Dirk is a pure devotee of Sat Sai Baba. He was with Bhagavan for about 23 years. His story is like this. He was born in Netherlands. His father was a drunkard and he was um, he had a very painful childhood. His mother was killed. Actually she was raped and killed. And this left a deep hurt, deep pain in the child. Dirk was only uh, eight years old then. So you can assume how much pain that incident could have caused. And when he married, that also was a failure. His wife eloped with his best friend. All these things, all these mishaps caused a sort of uh, disappointment. That time he was drinking a lot and that caused serious liver disease. So the doctors who checked him informed him that he will not live more than six months. That was the situation and then Bhagavan entered his life. In a dream, Bhagavan appeared and asked him to come to him. Bhagavan told, okay, you had enough, now come to me. I will show you what's the love, the love of your mother, I will show you. But uh, he did not know who this man is. He has never seen Baba before. So when he told about this dream to his doctor, the doctor advised him uh, to go to India because the doctor knew about uh, Sat Sai Baba. Anyway, he had no hope in life. He was going to die. So he decided to come to India. He came to India and uh, Bhagavan, he, he was ready to take him as his own son and Bhagavan treated him and miraculously he was saved from death and Bhagavan had a big mission for him. Dirk started working for Bhagavan. He opened many orphanages in India and Nepal. He started rehabilitation centers. He started saving the girls, small girls, no? They were kidnapped from their family and they were forced to do prostitution in India and Nepal. So Bhagavan has assigned this job also to Dirk to save these young girls from prostitution. This goes his story. He's Baba's own boy. I was lucky to meet him in Datta Anjaneya temple. He's like Hanuman. When I took him to the Hanuman coil, I said I am taking Hanuman to Hanuman because I could see Hanuman in him, the pure devotion and all. Recently he met uh, Mohanji, Guru Mohanji and uh, Baba directed him to meet Mohanji. Baba has given him a uh, ring with the uh, nine diamonds, it's called Navaratna Modra. Baba has given him this Modra, means uh, this ring as a protection. This ring he has gifted to Mohanji. Soon after Mohanji got this ring, he had to face a big accident. And Mohanji was miraculously saved from this accident. Nothing happened to him. Though he had to undergo some sort of pain, he was his life was saved. And I think this ring has played a big role in saving his life. Bhagavan's protection. Guru Mandala's protection was there. I met Brother Dirk through Mohanji. Mohanji gave me his number. And somehow there was instant connection. He started calling me sister. 
and I felt that he's uh, my brother. Some previous birth connections. Uh, at the Tatha Anjanaya temple, Brother Dirk asked me to uh, do a video in English so that he can also understand my experiences. He know little bit of my experiences. So he made me promise that I will make a video. I am reluctant to make uh, videos about my experiences because uh, there is a beautiful song in Malayalam. It's called Harinama Kirtanam. It goes on like this. Ananda Chinmaya Hare Gopi Karemana Nyaninda Bhava Madhu Tonaika Veda Miha Tonunda Dakil Akhilam Nyani Tenda Vari Tonina Me Varadana Rayanaya Jaya. Meaning is like this O Bhagavan, O Krishna, the beloved God of Gopikas, please bless me so that I don't feel ego, the I, ego the I, I should not feel that ego, even if I am feeling that ego, that means I, it should be the self, that self which is shining in all living beings, the Atma, in case I am feeling I, it should be self means all living beings that simply means enlightenment it's a beautiful prayer we should be very careful about this ego when we are telling about our experiences with the blessings of Bhagavan Sai Baba I'm starting to uh, tell narrate my stories because when I was with brother Dirk in Detta Anjanaya temple we went to uh, that that temple we had darshan uh, then we came to hanuman temple it is padala anjaneya temple it's a special deity who saved rama and lakshmana so hanuman is a symbol of bhakti he is the sevaka of bhagavan rama who saved his life bhagavan rama was his god it was hanuman who always saved Rama's life during the war and even after the war. This Patala Anjanaya temple is of that deity, the one who saved Rama and Lakshmana. Uh, after having Darshan, when I came back, when we came out and we took some pictures with the brother Dirk, touched his feet and took his blessings. He blessed me, putting his hand on my head. And later, when I checked my photos, I noticed that there is some vipodi on my head. And I take that as a blessing from Baba, Bhagavan Baba. It's all his power. He was with Bhagavan so many years now. I had to fulfill my promise to brother. I was leading a normal life in Dubai in uh, 2009. I had two kids, the elder one was a girl and the younger one was a boy. I was working as a civil engineer in an offshore construction company. In the, uh, Dubai there are temples of Shiva, Krishna and Shirdi Sai Baba. Actually, the Shirdi Baba idol is next to Shiva temple. So every Friday, most of the Fridays we used to go there. We used to do Abhishekha in Shivalinga. And then I will come to Shirdi Baba's idol. I had no idea who this Baba is. But everyone was doing uh, some pujas and doing pradikshna means uh, going around the idol. I will do the same and come back. I never knew that Baba is watching me during those times. In 2009, I was gifted with the book, The Autobiography of Yogi. I would say that your book is a living book. It has got some energy that will ignite the sleeping spirituality in us. The same thing happened with me. Uh, something shifted inside me. While I was reading that book, many times I cried. 
especially when uh, Mukundan described the presence of Adi Parashakti, the Jagadamba, maybe because I am connected to that form of God. Because in Kerala, my house is near, very near, next to a Devi temple. And when I married, uh, my husband's house is also near to Devi temple. So that book was the starting point of my spiritual journey, this birth. And I started searching for a guru. And I started searching for someone who can teach me Kriya Yoga and all. But at that same time, a new manager joined my office. He was a Kriya Yogi. He knew Kriya Yoga. So we started talking about Kriya Yoga. Uh, he taught me the basics of Kriya Yoga. And I started practicing it. I remember I will get up early in the morning, 4 o'clock, and I will start, I will try to meditate uh, with a prayer that I want to see you, God. Uh, I want to experience you, something like that. I will pray and I will start. And it was strange that not Krishna or Shiva appeared in my meditation. It was Sai Baba. Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba kept on coming to my visions. At that time, I had no idea who Bhagavan was. I had no idea about his divinity. And I didn't believe in human gods. No, I don't want to see this form. Uh, I want to see Krishna with the peacock and flute in his hand. Or I want to see Shiva. So this went on for some time. I was not ready to accept Bhagavan. And then the biggest blow in my life happened. My son Vivek, who was seven years old then, he left me. He left his physical body. It was due to cardiac arrest. He had wheezing problem. We were taking medications and all. But all of a sudden, it was on December 24th, 2009, on a Thursday. He was sitting in my lap. I was giving him nebulization. And suddenly, he collapsed and had cardiac arrest and he left the world. For some time I didn't know what to do. I could not accept the fact because the child was talking to me and then he left. I could not accept that fact. I did not know how I will live without him. So my thoughts were about suicide. I didn't want to live without him. Maybe because I had started already started these meditations and yoga and all these things. I could withstand that shock. There was a park near my home. Uh, some Punjabi brothers and sisters were teaching yoga for free. I used to go there. Because of this yoga and meditation, I didn't go mad. So this kind of sudden shocks can lead to such situations also. I started living again, uh, but I was in depression. I felt like a virakt, I mean, I felt like I don't want to leave. I want to go somewhere. I felt that detachment. Detachment to everything. I didn't want the job. I didn't want money. I just want to go somewhere so that I can get peace. Then I vigorously started searching for a guru. I felt that Sati Sai Baba is giving me a message because he used to come in my meditation. So I started reading about him. I started searching the internet, started searching about Baba. Uh, I started reading about his early days when he had not much uh, devotees. So the devotees were sharing their experiences, how they got personal attention from Baba and how Baba solved their problems and all. It was in 2010. By that time, Puttaparthi was like uh, the heaven on earth. Every day, Thousands of people were coming there. Before going to Dubai, uh, soon after the death of my son, we went to see Mata Amrita Antapai. That was the first guru whom I met in this life. We went to Amritapuri. We stayed there. We attended the satsang and bhajans in the night. At one point, when I was praying from my heart, uh, Amma turned towards me and her face, from her face, I knew that she know my pain. I could feel it. My pain was reflected in her face. When I reached Rama, 
I could not control my tears and I started crying and Amma was pacifying me. There were thousands of people and Amma was sitting in one position and hugging all of them. I met her two or three times. The same way I felt when we reach her there are no thoughts. We feel at home, a motherly hug. And so many people are experiencing it. And then when I went back to Dubai, started reading about Baba, we, because of my ignorance, Baba can give personal attention to everyone. Now I know that. But at that, that time, I was ignorant about this thing. So I prayed to Baba, uh, Baba, you are very busy now. If I come to you, you won't be able to give me time. I want to talk to you for long. I want to share my pain. So give me a guru with whom I can share my pain, who will listen to me, who will give personal care to me. And one day when I was searching the internet, I came across the face of a child and I started reading the blog. It was about Mohanji. That picture was of his child, Ammu, who left him at a very young age. It was Babaji blog and it was the part where Mohanji's daughter Ammu's story was shared. For many days I read about him and somehow I felt connected to him because first time I saw Mohanji's picture I felt that I am familiar to his face and when I showed his picture to my brother also he said the same thing. I feel a familiarity with him. Later, I found that most of his devotees felt that familiarity. Whichever deity they are praying to, they felt that deity's presence in Mohanji. But at that time, it was strange to me. And then I started writing to Mohanji. And he quickly responded. And now I feel that at that time, Bhagavan knew that I needed a friend. More than a guru, I needed listening ears. Who can listen to me? Who would understand me? Who will understand my pain and pacify me? Because I could not take advices at that time. But with Mohanji, uh, when he told me something, it was easy for me to accept because I knew that he had gone through that phase. He has gone through many tests, severe tests in his life. He approached life in a positive way and overcame obstacles in his spiritual path in a very strong way so I felt that he could help me then I started doing power of purity meditation it's this way my journey with Mohanji started journey through the path of pathlessness the name path of pathlessness is very apt because we don't know what's next when we walk only we know that what's going to be there in front of us there are many unexpected challenges, many ups and downs in this path. But with the Guru's grace, we'll be able to overcome all the challenges in this path. Then the first meeting with Mohanji was on a Dipavali day, November. At that time, Mohanji gifted me Shirdi Baba, Sai Satcharida. Even before that, I started reading uh, Baba Satcharida. I stopped driving the car my family will not allow me because i was very upset uh, they were afraid that i will meet with some accident or something i started going by office bus my nature was like that i will not show my sorrow or tears to anyone who is not very close to me and when i'm going by bus i will take sai satcharda in my hand i will start reading so that no one will ask me any questions even then i remember one of my colleague was very anxious I don't think um, she had a bad intention but she was very curious to know that how I am so strong because my tears I used to hide inside and she used to inquire how you are uh, managing this and that at the time I would be crying inside I would be trying to concentrate on Sai Satcharida her curiosity used to kill me the moment I reach office I will go to my room I will start crying one of my colleague, um, she was like my sister. I'm sure that she's my sister from some previous birth. She will pacify me. She was very dear to me. Even now, she's very dear to me. She's in Dubai. I'm in Kerala. 
but still i feel that closeness to her because when she used to talk to me i felt that she know my pain even though she is not my family she is also a christian uh, but i could easily connect to her i know that uh, love is beyond all the barriers of religion and all these things i could feel from that uh, relationship with her but strangely that colleague was very curious about uh, the death of near and dear had to face the same situation i don't know how she attracted whether the law of attraction worked or something like that in my case i was suppressing my emotions in front of others only to close people i used to reveal my uh, pain so i started writing to mohan ji those days my daily routine was like this i will go to the office open the system i will send a mail to mohan ji i will write something something about my son something about my pain and later i used to write about uh my challenges in job or something like that spirituality i used to take advice i started doing power of purity meditation even before meeting mohan ji because in dubai there was a group the first day of power of purity meditation i was crying throughout the meditation i was crying and the first vision i got was of mother mary with child jesus and that was a surprise for me because in this birth i was not connected anyway most of my friends were christians i knew uh, jesus i liked him but i was not expecting the power of purity meditation and the shakti path from the um, power of purity family in dubai was very powerful and uh, the healing started the first shakti path i got from mohan ji was extremely powerful it was the most powerful shakti path i got Uh, it was i told you i met him on deepavali day when he gave me shakti path it was like uh, electric current passing through me uh, after the shakti path i was i felt intoxicated i could not walk somehow i managed to find my chair and went and sat there uh, my friend's husband was sitting uh, my friend sharnas who is a very beautiful soul her husband baji was sitting there he started a conversation with me i could not understand what he is asking then he asked me about my whereabouts he he was also meeting me for the first time i could hear his voice but i felt that his voice is coming from distant place through a tunnel or something like that so i told him i'm sorry i'm not able to answer you now he looked at me and said oh it's okay okay <laughs> you take rest after some time i felt it be okay i talked to mohan ji then still i was in that intoxicated state for 2 3 days while i was driving back i asked mohan ji how i am going to reach my home safely so mohan ji told me don't worry i am with you until this moment he has kept his word because i am reaching my home without much uh, difficulty with that first shakti path i felt uh, a churning and burning in my heart chakra for 2 3 days i felt high energy i was not able to sleep and i knew the healing has started he initiated me to shakti path i started giving shakti path so that also helped heal the wound this was the first part of my journey with mohan ji and i started feeling the connection uh, with mohan ji i started feeling the connection in very strange ways those days i was very confused uh, because when i start writing something to him i will be planning to write something and i will end up writing something else many of my letters reveal me my past lives many past lives with mohan ji and uh, devi i realized that these past life connections are there in my letters and then the kailash with mohan ji happened and that was a big shift in my consciousness and that i will explain to you in the next part so for the time being namaste